Once again, uh, it's my pleasure and honor really to be with you today virtually from, from uh, Tartu, our intellectual, I hope we, we, we like to think our intellectual education capital. And I really would love to share some, some light to, to topics such as participatory budgeting and, and, and share with you uh, what we have done in Estonia regarding this, uh, why we have done, and mostly focusing on, on what lessons do we have from, uh, from experimenting and, and assisting municipalities since 2013 already uh, on implementation of participatory budgeting. Uh, but, but maybe before going... Uh, uh, proceeding, just few words about me that uh, as, as Cynthia already introduced, yes, I'm an expert on digital engagement or engagement uh, more generally as well. And why I just like to emphasize this because when, whenever I also consult uh, municipalities or train, I always uh, share with them kind of like citizen perspective. So this is I try, I I, I try to to get to help them to see uh, everything they do from citizen perspective because really my background is media and communication. So because usually this this really helps uh, if we put ourselves in into shoes of. Of, of those who are our main target groups and then to whom we are, we are doing or planning our activities and doing our initiatives. And I have been consulting and training and researching municipalities and how technology can support and then improve the interaction between municipalities and citizens more, for more than, than 17 years. And, uh, and really, I have very many interesting experiences and, and I love local democracy. I think this is exactly the, this is a level, a level where the real citizen engagement already works and then where so many interesting new, new initiatives can be experimented and started. And I'm resident of Tartu municipality, the municipality which surrounds the Tartu city. Why I think it is important to mention it here that this gives you a bit of context also because all the examples I will share with you, they are, I mean, these are coming from Tartu city, from Tartu municipality and a couple of few municipalities, but, but really I do many things also um, uh, we start to city and municipality because I'm really I'm I'm really citizen of those municipalities, so I'm I'm, I'm really understanding uh, and and kind of sensing this uh, engagement issue there much more, and I'm happy to share those experiences from my home municipality and 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 city uh, city where where I live. Uh, well, I, I said I will I will share why, when, and how we started with participatory budgeting, uh, where we are now, uh, giving you many practical examples and kind of narrative of our first pilot participatory budgeting in that city, and what we learned from that. And of course, I'm all also sharing with you challenges, what we still face and, 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 and what you probably, if you are just starting, you can, you can probably be smarter and avoid some of the mistakes we, we made or, or correct them already on, 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 on your way or uh, while processing. And, and, and also what kind of support we do provide to Estonian municipalities right now, not just only in implementing participatory budgeting, but also widely, uh, widely on engaging citizens and using technology for that. Uh, well, the start of participatory budgeting in Estonia, our first seminar to Estonian municipalities to introduce this as a concept and um, share some international practices was already back 2011, because um, then we realized actually that the momentum was right, that we, we noticed that in 
election programs of local elections or, or other way or, or, or other places, we saw that municipalities are talking a lot about uh, being more transparent, open and engaging citizens. But, but we, we did not see any clear mechanisms for that where we understood that say our uh, municipalities are struggling a bit to find kind of concrete form how to, how to execute this. And participatory budgeting, as we understood, is really a good learning by doing exercise because really it, 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 it shows uh, the, the government, municipality, local government, really the, the, it gives very concrete process with concrete start and concrete end, uh, end and under, makes, makes it much easier to understand what is the real value of engaging, how citizens' ideas can really be materialized uh, into something tangible as, uh, as such. And so we, we, we understood that this is a great momentum to introduce this, this concept. And secondly, of course, citizens, we, we, this, this is some, not, nothing new actually that citizens do care about, or generally people do care about money, money where in this case where investment or municipalities where taxpayers' money is queuing, uh, what are the investments? And public space is also something we, we really care about with what is surrounding us. So there is, expectedly already high interest in, in, in audience uh, towards this kind of initiative. And of course, may, our main ideas for, for, for my organization, we are organization who, who really mission-based organization, non-governmental organization, really supports uh, democratic development of governments and local governments. We understood that we need to act activate citizens' communities because, I don't know, Estonian society, at least, probably Latvians are better, is very, we are very individualistic. So we understood that also we, Estonia needed at that time kind of this community push or uh, and and also of course this process actually enables uh, also to to uh, for citizens to come up with their out of box ideas creativity it should uh, support flourishing or support uh, creativity and in innovation and innovativeness uh, of citizens uh, well, we are in terms of numbers where we are. I said, uh, firstly, we introduced 2011. Actually, Tartu City, and I'm coming to this showcase. Tartu City, City started to implement it 2013, and by 2022, because we we did mini research last year, uh, more than uh, you can see, more than uh, more than 51 municipalities are already implementing it. The, the, the trend is growing, increasing number of, of municipalities out of 70, 79, uh, 51 are implementing participatory budgeting. And in terms of time and money, uh, most of the municipalities are distributing or letting citizens to decide on on roughly uh, on on money between uh, 10,000 uh, to 50,000, the biggest part. But of course, there are examples of small municipalities where only 10,000 euros are decided by citizens uh, using participatory budgeting. Or there is also Tallinn and Tartu South cities who are distributing much more. In Tartu case, this is 200,000 uh, per year. And in Tallinn, I guess it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. It was four thousand, four hundred thousand. Probably, it's, it's it's more now. And most of the municipalities are implementing this um, from uh, from two to five years. Of course, up to city cases is more already uh, ten years already, and uh, and and yes, it varies. But this is statistical. And, and when Tartu City participatory story, uh, because I said it was our pilot pilot case, and we were really as organization, we were we had this luxury 
to design the model, to, to review all different international uh, practices to introduce them to city and send together with city working group because it was working group formed uh, in the city. We were external experts uh, advising the process and monitoring the process, but there were several people, people from, from, uh, from several administration units like lawyers and, and, and the mayor attended himself as well. All, all working group meetings there were also representatives of all political parties represented at such time in, in council. So we formed a, a working group and we as external experts, we, 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 we proposed a initial model. We designed a draft models and we discussed we 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 we, we discussed uh, about cause and pros and then we adjusted the model and 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 and, and then uh, then it was adopted uh, once we went through all those discussions and steps and all those uh, different uh, aspects were discussed and decided like what what will be the the main aim rules which platform will be used and and then the model was adopted by council and actually the Tartu model i'm coming to this how we implemented it hasn't changed a lot since 2013 when we started it has some extra elements added uh, based on lessons learned but yeah generally but but just very shortly that the aim from the very beginning when we started to implement Dr. City uh, participatory budgeting was 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 uh, agreed that this will be really that uh, one uh, tangible investment object in in now now this is two actually per year will be will be decided uh, this investment will be decided by citizens there is when we started it was decided that one percent of investment uh, budget will be decided by by citizens with which at this time was 100 thousand now it is doubled the, the amount and uh, there were of course certain rules where which were in place which were decided in the beginning that this is as this uh, object comes from investment budget it should be uh, public uh, object object in public space accessible for 24 hours to 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 everybody. Uh, it should be only, I mean, for public good. It should not have many maintenance costs for the city. It should be built and basically maintained also for this still this amount of money which was was designated for participatory budgeting. And, and 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 yes, uh, the one rule was also that I mean every city, everybody can submit ideas, but only registered citizens of the city can vote. And and uh, and also from the very beginning, we voting age was 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 less than it is at at average or traditional voting. It was from sixteen years. Now it is even fourteen. Uh, and and platform was also basically we started to use the same platform which is uh, electronic system information system for municipalities which municipalities were using using anyway for council work but of course it needed many adjustments and we also uh, supported the uh, to city uh, and helped to design and implement those adjustments and so the model uh, as said, model itself has not changed much. So this is easy. I'm just going very, very quickly through the through the process. Uh, ideas. We uh, each year the process starts in spring and ends in December when uh, before the, the the budget will 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 be decided uh, anyway in municipalities. Uh, the general budget and and the row for extra extra budget line for participatory budgeting but in spring each year and uh, the process starts from a uh, collection of ideas ideas proposals from citizens and it is done using offline uh, offline tools so everybody can also bring piece of paper to the town hall where there is uh, for this period there is an extra 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 people recruited uh, by municipality who uh, who uh, uh, 
manage this process there and, and this is a uh, extra extra point and room in dawn hall but of course most of the people still submit uh, their ideas online using the platform then the next phase is that all ideas are grouped by communication department because communication part the department of of the city is the host of this process they are grouped by by topics uh, and and uh, like playgrounds or i don't know options for for active sport and parks and so this way and these uh, are the the groups of ideas are distributed or or shared uh, with respective departments of, of, of city and their specialist experts should give the expert opinion and should discuss this in, in, in each department, how feasible this is for this, this idea is for this amount of money, are there any legal uh, restrictions or, or, or obstacles or, or something. And it is very important from the very beginning that everything should be completely transparent this process. So all those experts comments are also uh, consolidated and also published on the website. So, uh, and some of course, always some ideas are just disqualified because this is just obviously not doable for that amount of money. But what is very important, all expert opinions should be public and, and also very clear explanation why this idea is not qualified for the next round. Then next round is topical seminars where, and these are public events where idea, authors of ideas are invited to the uh, organized the event, uh, invited to uh, introduce their idea, explain why this is important for that. So, and there are also also experts, and not just experts from city government, but also landscape architects, uh, whatever different. We we invite as many external experts, uh, we, uh, architects, uh, uh, who are involved, who are connected to those topics and of course say say contribute voluntarily but we always find good good experts and and all this all ideas uh, are discussed and voted for final list but voted only uh, only by 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 authors and experts uh, so because uh, the idea we did not have this phase of voting for the final list uh, in the beginning, but we learned that you cannot provide too many ideas for the final voting list for citizens because, I mean, first year we, we, we experimented with, I don't know, 200 ideas and then citizens are too lazy, they just read through first five and say make their, their choice. So now what we want to achieve is, uh, is that really to the final voting uh, uh, stage there will be only ideas which are which which ha have been proved by 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 round of uh, uh, orders of ideas by citizens basically legally but but also by 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 a group of experts so they are already proved to be good and, and uh, good ideas and then uh, there are, there will be also presentation of ideas if this be before fine, uh, final voting where there are all like like uh, lift type of uh, type of uh, pitching where where each uh, order of final uh, list idea has five minutes to introduce uh, its idea and also those events are real time and real life events on site but also transferred in in in, in Facebook, as facebook events and so just to guarantee that as many people can attend as as possible and 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 then there is booting and there is approval of ideas and booting as said this is still only it was until very recently only for registered citizens of Tartu. now after many discussions and i was really fighting for this we have also uh, achieved that uh, all students who are uh, who are uh, full-time students in Tartu who are not necessarily registered in, but they can also vote, they have also voting rights. 
And what we also learned from first year and we added as, as element, which is now there uh, since then, is that we train once a final list of boots is selected, uh, or booting a list of ideas is selected before final voting. We uh, train, it's voluntary, of course, we, we invite orders a final list to, uh, to attend training seminars on how to market, how to promote uh, or disseminate uh, your, your idea, how to, how to win support of community. And also we agree on go in good of good campaign because first year's experience was that citizens, some of them were doing a really nasty campaign, which, which is not tolerated when politicians are doing this. But uh, so we understood that we need to educate also citizens and, and, and citizen groups. And uh, yeah, well, what kind of ideas we, we have received since the beginning I think one, one, one clear conclusion is and, and learning lesson is that citizens are extremely smart to really to signal the real problems in, in community in cities. So uh, one of my favorite uh, ideas, it was never a winning idea, but it was uh, always like um, uh, landing on a, a force or fifth space was that how to, we, we need to do something with our ugly uh, Soviet type block houses. And there were several ideas how to, how to use, I don't know, young, young artists and painters. And I really liked this idea. And now we see it actually these, this was earlier idea, but this has affected. There are so much more, a city also has invested so much more on really transforming, also using artists in, in houses. So this idea has somehow very much influenced. And I also liked as this group of uh, authors uh, also, very early years of participatory budgeting already showed how to promote you as order you, you if you think your idea is good then you need to promote and say so use kind of light shows to show where are those ugly houses which need to be transformed and and so but of course there are many practical ideas and each year basically there is one kind of very concrete uh, problem area which pops up and which shows city that there is a problem. When we started with participatory budgeting in Tartu, the problem area was, was river. It was clear that river, which should be an opportunity for city, basically, it was for many people, it, it was seen, uh, it, they perceived it as a problem in city. They did not have enough access. And so many ideas were about that more, slips and, and stuff. And now, I mean, city has already a part of this participatory budgeting processes uh, already invested so much more, though now this is not the river anymore. Then there were playgrounds uh, and, and, and schoolyards, which was clearly with a problem. So each year there are different, different kind of um, focuses just highlighted by citizens. And I think this is a big value of this process. And early years already, we received very many green ideas, which also shows how smart, how innovative, how future looking are actually citizens are. And well, to generalize, to, to sum it up, they start to lessen results and lessons learned. This is just calorie of, of all winning ideas and you, you will have those uh, so slides also to have a uh, closer look. But last year's winning proposals, uh, winning ideas were, well, when we started this process, we wanted, as I said, to get out of box ideas. Well, first years showed that most of the citizens are still thinking very pragmatically. Most of the ideas are about, I don't know, repairing uh, pavements, uh, making, uh, making roads more bike friendly and so on. In a way, it was a bit of disappointment because really where are those creative ideas? At the same time, I mean, people, you have right to signal this. And that this is also very important in this process that to, to have this possibility to signal the biggest problems. Yeah, municipality needs to do this anyway, but they have to, to have the priorities and citizens show the priority. But now we are in a level 
or in a stage in Dato City where we get basically both. We get quite creative proposals, like one of the winning uh, ideas was to, to do uh, this slope for almost downhill skiing in almost in the city center, which is, there is already, I mean, the land, landscape allows this and there is already start, but, but now really it needs extra investment. This was one idea because there are always two now. And second was very practical one, just more benches in, in public space, just, it is never, never too many. So you see that by the end, after more than 10 years of experimenting, we are basically achieving the, the, the initial aims. Uh, what else we have learned uh, offline and online in a meaning that, I mean, you cannot do this participatory budget, you can do, but I think in my opinion, this is never so successful to do it only online or to do it nowadays offline. This is no way as well, no go way. So the best way is to combine that you definitely need a good platform to, to enable citizens who are internet users to submit their ideas, to vote, to, to add additional uh, material, to let even comment each other's ideas. But you need to combine it. As I mentioned there is a deliberation. There are public events and these are on site because really I think this is a value of uh, and core of democracy is that you you have this deliberation you you end up with much more informed citizens and we also very important we also bring those photos with ideas before final voting to the city space physically we display them on the place in in that two case on a bridge where everybody basically passes the bridge so everybody can see it is good promotion so it is also very important wider impact in that two of this process this has not remained only you know participatory budgeting process which many critics still argue that well this is like playing democracy this is just you decide on very small amount of money well, in that case, I can say that it, this process, the model itself, the way like people, citizens submit ideas and experts discuss, there are discussions, deliberation, and then citizens are much informed to make their choice. This model has been implemented. It has been rooted in, in so many different decision-making processes in Tartu already. And as, 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 as I said, many, many municipalities have followed, basically most of the Estonian municipalities, after seeing that actually, or, uh, looking at Tartu and seeing how well this process enables a uh, municipality to, to still to practice citizen engagement, uh, enables to, to activate communities, share responsibilities with citizens. And of course, this is the beauty of this, this exercise or this initiative is that each municipality, at least in Estonian case, is free to risk to implement, to experiment with different models to, to change the process if needed. So, and in Dartu case, really, as I said, the same uh, model to use interactive maps or other platforms to, to submit ideas and give expertise, but then to get together and discuss ideas. The same model is, is implemented in different urban planning and placemaking uh, processes, like whenever, if it is master plan, uh, master plan discussions and adoption or, or any other. So it is rooted very much there and it works well. And I also promised you to say a few words about um, uh, uh, if there is any difference uh, if we implement uh, participatory budgeting in, in rural areas or smaller municipalities, because Tartu by the end still in, in Estonian context is a big city. Uh, well, yes and no. So uh, an, another kind of narrative or, or a story or a small, a small case I would love to share is, is about Tartu Parish. I said this is municipality surrounding Tartu, but this is very, very challenging uh, municipality because it has very 
city-like uh, space and environment, but at the same time, it has many, many rural remote villages and areas because after administrative reform, it, it is it is combined by several, several previous uh, smaller municipalities. So it has a lot of challenges in terms of citizen engagement. And again, participatory budgeting really shows or helps municipality to understand and also design other civic uh, citizen engagement processes uh, based on this similar model. And this is kind of light version what what we uh, I have uh, consulted uh, sent to you to, to start with. So there is only idea collection using the same platform because most of the municipalities use the same platform. And there is an expertise phase still, but there are not, of course, there are not so many different rounds of uh, rounds of expert uh, expert uh, discussions. And so this is just, you know, municipality experts are, are assessing those ideas. And there are, at the moment, there are no deliberation phases because really the municipality consists of so so diverse uh, communities and it would be so complicated to organize. So there is only idea collection, expertise and voting and mostly basically online. Well, it is, for me, it's not, uh, not, not complete. I would still try to find out which are the ways to add this deliberation element. But it, it works really well. We see that communities are very active. We, 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 we fear that there will be more so some urban, more urbanized uh, communities within this municipality. We, 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 are afraid, we were afraid that they will be uh, having much majority of, of votes, but actually what happened is quite the opposite the the more small rural communities are much uh, much more successful to to mobilize and and actually the most of the winning ideas are giving to to rural smaller smaller areas and and communities so this is very nice equalizing effect and of course, what the municipality is mostly happy about is that it has really boosted its community activism in, in areas, especially in new areas where it is really hard to kind of mobilize new, new, new citizens because city really uh, this municipality really grows quickly. And what is also very nice uh, showcase from this uh, Tato uh, municipality uh, participatory budgeting that this is more creativity that once a uh, winning idea was to to uh, to 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 put the, to light uh, all uh, bus stops uh, to to have new led lights everywhere but then uh, it was obvious that we cannot light them all i mean there is no resources then it was decided that citizens also need to show those select uh, select those which are the most critic in most critical needs so one engagement step led to another so it is it is good way really to kind of activate citizens to make them understanding that actually their community problems should be solved by with their contributions next steps in in uh, the municipality we really think how to use all those digital tools they have like geo information portal even better uh, to motivate citizens to act actively participate, so to use uh, map solutions, interactive map solutions to show the the, the places where where new objects uh, should be should be built. So uh, yeah, just uh, just uh, small small adjustments, and finally, very one 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 example I wanted to share how many different variations of civic engagement participatory budgeting as such as model can have. Actually, there is one small municipality quite close to Latvia, actually, Ruge municipality in, in South Estonia, where they, they used very interesting nudging, nudging method uh, within participatory budgeting. So they decided that they, they, they made an open call for ideas from citizens 
uh, about what uh, sport object uh, say 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 lacks the most, and citizens decided or proposed that that we want to have and selected that we want to have tennis court built in in in, in municipality. And but uh, the municipality said that yeah, well, you have your tennis courts, but 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 you have to contribute first. And the contribution was that there was extra platform, online platform, and every citizen started to to collect kind of healthy hours or or activity hours. So whenever you jogged, run, walked, or, or made some physical exercises. At whom you 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 reported your your active activity hours, and only when certain number of activity hours was collected by community, the municipality started to build this uh, this tennis court. So it was really nudging communities towards healthy 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 life. And uh, well, finally, challenges what we still have in Estonia uh, when looking at municipalities. Challenge one is really that we still, I mean, in municipalities which are implementing participatory budgeting since many years, they still struggle. I mean, if you start uh, asking citizens, uh, we, we made some, some polls, say there are still so many people that, uh, that haven't never heard about <laughs> participatory budgeting. So there is a huge gap. Municipalities think that, well, everybody knows and knows how it, it works. No, uh, people do not. So we really uh, support now and, and advise municipalities to use a citizen-to-citizen -citizen approach. That in, in Tartu municipality, we experimented that we made uh, small videos with winning, uh, winning order, with orders of winning ideas of previous years. And and they were, and and then we 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 made really campaign with all those video clips, and it was much more convincing to citizens to be more active, to come out with their ideas, and really we 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 measured the impact. It was quite huge. Next year, when we started to to use this approach, we we had so many more participants. So this is one one lesson learned and a recommendation to you. Another is that platform is very important. Yes, we use from out of conformity, we use this existing uh, electronic uh, system platform, which works to some extent. But now in some municipalities, we have uh, experimented with uh, one Icelandic platform, prior your priorities, which is, as you can see, it's just, uh, you know, crowdsourcing solutions to improve air quality in Thailand. This is just an example of the same platform or usage of same platform in, in Thailand in one project. This enables citizens to add extra nice photos to their ideas. It works like Facebook. You you can you can like uh, you can add like you can comment somebody's ideas. It looks nice and it works well and it's very important also that this platform is good. And well, there's the biggest challenge is still that how to combat uh, with this fatigue or people get tired of of, of being engaged. So they so are very very not lazy, but say uh, everybody is so overwhelmed by, by the personal lives that how to motivate still citizens, how and how to find new citizens to participate, because the old ones, the usual suspects, they come, but how to find, how to reach out uh, everybody. So this is a big question. And of course, all those elements I showed, like um, extra campaign, targeted campaign, uh, uh, clear results and communication of earlier results helps a lot. And youth engagement is also one of the big challenges because if you look at the ideas, many ideas are about youngsters and, and I mean, different, different skate parks and so on. But I would say that young people themselves are still quite, quite, quite passive in this process. And finally, well, we, as I said, uh, we think that it is not the, uh, the participating, uh, participatory budgeting is just one, one mechanism, one, one form of dialogue and engaging citizens and let them participate. But we, 
in our organization, we really support that and show municipalities how to use existing digital tools and 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 start thinking on new ones to make all this um, governance more open and engaging. And 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 uh, we are we are uh, now uh, doing organizing capacity building uh, regional seminars, and we also include as much as we can uh, Estonian municipalities into our international projects uh, really and, and help to help uh, uh, help to exchange those ideas with other other European regions and and cities really on how to face green deal challenges and all that with engagement of citizens and finally my my key takeaways for you is that really as it's always good to, to engage external experts. In our case, uh, like, like Tartu City and Tartu Municipalities, they have engaged us because really we have already methodologies. We are sharing international practices. This is, this is always, I mean, helps to widen the perspective and, uh, and, uh, and show what works uh, in one place. Something, should, something can be always taken over, adjusted and start using. So secondly, really start small, but start now. This, this doesn't go only for participatory budgeting, but also about this. That there are always good tools somewhere just or models, and you can always adopt something from, from, from others. And of course, digital tools are absolutely wonderful, but do not trust only them or don't think that good engagement can be only done uh, digitally because it doesn't. It, it, it best is to combine. And finally, engagement should be really fun for both sides, really. So, uh, and participatory budgeting still enables different variations and, and uh, yeah, to, to enjoy the process. Thank you very much. And I'm happy now to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina. And I have a list of questions both from me and from regional seminars, but I would also like to encourage participants, if you want to ask a question, just write it in the chat or raise your hand and then uh, I'm going to give you a floor in a way. Uh, before we go to the first question in the chat, and maybe some that will come from participants. So the first one I have, is participatory budgeting required? Is there a law that asks municipalities to do that? No, no, in Estonia, it's 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 completely voluntary. But as uh, if you remember the 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 graph I showed, that anyway, I mean, you can see that there is even no need in our case, at least, to make it compulsory because most of the municipalities, I mean, the trend is 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 growing, and the number of uh, municipalities which implement it is increasing, and and so. Most of the municipalities still, I mean, because uh, the example is so encouraging to them and, 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 and the model is there, best practices uh, are there. So yeah, most of them start it anyway. <laughs> okay, and then the next question connected to that, uh, is there guidelines that uh, municipalities can use for implementing? So basically when a young municipality starts, do they have some kind of guidelines from the state or yeah, probably state. Uh, well, uh, yeah, well, state is less in more that actually we as as we still of course we 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 cannot we we do not have any copyright for that. We just were happen to be the organization which introduced, but but we have also published on our website many guidelines and and because uh, when we started uh, to implement our expo pilots in Tartu City, we also had. Um, possibilities and mini funds to monitor the process and, and make uh, uh, make studies and focus groups and so so we 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 published every year the first years we published always also reports based on uh, based on uh, that to case so lessons learned recommendations so and this is still all available in Estonian, uh, unfortunately, but but this is still available. So many municipalities still following 
which to my in my opinion in the beginning was even even a, a problem for me because many of the smaller municipalities and rural municipalities and or oh, they started to follow all that the third to city example but but actually this process i think as any other engagement process is so context context demanding and context the bias that that you need to consider you know readiness of your civil society everything so and and people's i don't know accessibility and and all these so but now i think that all municipalities everyone who starts uh, yeah reviews all what is existing and guidelines but they still try to quite realistically assess their needs and 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 and, and possibilities and then kind of uh, design or redesign their own model okay okay yeah that, that makes sense um that does uh, a question before i go to my questions there is a question from a participant so of course hello but uh, where are the projects uh, like where the practical infrastructure projects are on the public land or on a private property and if on a private property how is that dealt with no so this was yeah probably i was yeah i was um uh, due to uh, time limitations, I was uh, running probably too quickly and yeah, did not mention that one of the, the requirements, one of the, the, the key rules, uh, and we started uh, with this when we designed this start to pilot model is that now it is, we, we can deal only with, with, public, uh, with, with public city owned land or, or municipality owned land. And this is one of the reasons why some of the ideas are disqualified. This is also the role of experts, city experts to, uh, to, to identify if, uh, because now I must say that now in Tartu city, at least the citizens are very, very concrete because also we we tell them to be as concrete with their idea as possible if say propose that i don't know one part of park should be renovated or i don't know updated then we ask immediately which kind of park and which which part and uh, because it helps also to assess to immediately say the city that to say that if this is this, this part, this land, this complete, this concrete area is really owned by 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 city. If not, this uh, this is automatically uh, disqualified because there is no no way to start, you know, uh, to start negotiating with uh, with with owner. No, this is one of the. But this is also very important. Just you you know to set the rules and 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 also publish very clearly the rules because this is other way it is just you know somehow cheating or, or disappointing citizens it must be very clear in the beginning of the process already that please uh, yeah you can check uh, uh, the, the the ownership here or so giving so many reference public references as possible also to citizens before uh, collecting ideas Okay, I believe that answers the question, and then I believe it's there because the new uh, municipal law, which what well, came into effect on January first, it also has like obviously it's best if it's a public land, but also it can be on a private. But then you need all kinds of extra steps. I believe extra steps are just too difficult, yeah, uh, to take. But okay, also building on uh, building on what you said, and somehow I started reading and it. Uh, drop from my head, but I'm going to come back to it at some moment. So I have a next section of questions from the seminars we had in regions. And one thing that worries to some extent some municipalities is how detailed the projects need to be. How detailed projects do people need to submit? So for example, you then need to calculate everything to the last cent or like the architecture designs need to be very detailed. Yeah, no. Absolutely, uh, this is this is clear that uh, that we cannot we I mean municipality and city cannot expect citizens to be experts on on this no because by the end we still want to, want them them just to propose ideas of course ideas which are more or less doable no I mean in the beginning we had really like 
uh, really, I mean, basically one very small field on this website where uh, and and uh, which they say needed to to fill in uh, about description of of this project. I think nowadays we 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 still ask a bit more. There are few few fields uh, when they submit it online. Uh, there are few fields like. Please give short descript description, name name of your idea, and short description. And there are already like kind of like control questions because we know that in later in campaign it 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 is important because by the end it gives more more chances to the idea if the author is already uh, thinking on those uh, those uh, aspects. Like this is really we we ask uh, that you can uh, name. Or you can you can highlight how how much community activism you your idea is increasing, or does it allow words to, to be uh, to, to, for the area or neighborhood to, 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 to show or to practice somehow the more community activism, you know, meaning like if if it's you know playground or something that it obviously affects like quite big big community around or something and uh, that in terms of price we really ask them uh, we ask already in our call text to, to, to pay attention that the money available is only only this much but and we also give some extra extra guidelines or kind of like I don't know yeah. sm small brief is published where there are Previous, previous ideas and, and, and then citizens can already have some, some overview also understanding what one or, or other object is, 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 is um, what's the price of one or another uh, idea or object. And so, so we, we just give supportive material which enables them to be as precise as they can. But but this is not the reason for disqualifying anything. We 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 still don't expect them to have or to to ask for some offers. But but nevertheless, we sometimes get very interesting. Somebody is already making so many home tasks. So there are always ideas which are submitted with additional materials, with price lists, with with photo material, how something like this is already done somewhere else, and so so citizens, uh, yeah, still do understand that as um, if they are more precise uh, and exact, they still have more chances also to be qualified. But we don't expect this. Okay, and that that's what I wanted to ask. So, for example, if the calculations are correct or the but would be too high, they wouldn't be dropped, right? They, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more about but, like ideas, not so very concise projects. No, no, this is this should be should not be. I mean, it's the one of the main principles is still to avoid to have too many barriers and obstacles because, as as I said, this fatigue or this kind of you know tiredness is always in citizens and or being overwhelmed with something else, something which is, you know, your everyday troubles. So if you want citizens to participate at all, then it must be done. I mean, technically very easy, very, very simple and, and easy and motivating, but also, you know, you, you, you cannot expect uh, or uh, estimate that at this stage they, they should use so many extra or extra, I don't know, some, some, some uh, yeah, some some learning or uh, researching. So it's yeah. Okay, okay, great. And then moving on to my next question: uh, more big projects, but more expensive, or more small projects? And uh, so yeah. So when municipality has an amount to lo allocate, should we make more small projects or less but bigger ones? Yeah, well, this is a uh, this is a uh, this is uh, this is this is a question actually. <laughs> this is a good question, and and I, I I think that this is really hard to answer. And and this our our experiences show also that somehow and now I base I'm I'm basing now on on international studies, and I know in US there have been several studies also which show that there is a clear link and connection between the amount 
and motivation of people to participate. So in a meaning that, well, if, if it's more available, more citizens, and probably, I mean, citizens are also more ready to, to contribute more on elaborating their ideas. So this is all connected. So if it's tiny money, you know, you probably just, you know, throw out your ideas without thinking too much at them. But, but then again, if you look at some, and then especially in the early years, if you looked at those ideas, some of them were really tiny things. I mean, municipality could do them, I mean, and, and municipality was doing so. So this was also very uh, important to get so small ideas also, because not necessarily, they were mostly, they were never winning ideas anyway. So, I mean, people, the other people still vote more for bigger ideas. But I think that it is very important also that, that popping up so smaller ideas, or at least we don't have any barriers or obstacles uh, for those, because there were some, some really tiny ideas which uh, municipality uh, representatives were looking at them and saying, well, we, we have some, some budget for this tiny thing, we have budget anyway, so we don't need to even to, to qualify this to this process, but we communicate to the authors that, well, we will do this anyway. So this is also the value and beauty of this process that it still, as I said, it, it still brings the ideas uh, brings out the ideas which are which would be never born in in offices of, of city administration but i would say that actually this money maybe just uh, small start smaller in in terms of money as well as we did that it was municipalities were not ready in the beginning to risk with too much money but once say so that citizens are smart enough that the process when designed properly there are not so many risks for municipality and they were ready to to to, to increase uh, remarkably the money and and the increase of money has also showed that really the ideas are are properly discussed and agreed in communities and so it it has increased the quality as well so. Okay, so what, so the perspective that I usually have on this is that the small projects can be implemented faster than the large ones and it could engage people to, so, so, that, so when they see how the ideas actually come to something, it's kind of encouraging for them. Mm -hmm. But I also agree, yes, that the big projects have bigger motivation that we're going to like, uh, so that, that's a, not, not to say a double-edged sword, but there is no concrete answer on what's better. But um, yeah. my next question also from the regional seminars is uh, how do municipalities deal with inflation and, for example, a project is uh, submitted and with time it's such, such a big project that expenditure on it just grows, for example, the last few years. Is there such a problem or because people are expected to only submit ideas, not specific projects, it's not such a big idea. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that, that partly, yeah, partly you already answered that really, this is, this is about ideas. And um, yeah, well, I think that, that almost everybody understands the situation now that, that, that yes, probably your idea was to have new, I don't know, 50 new benches, but, but with inflation, like, like we, we do have, it's, it's kind of, yeah, it's, 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 um, it's understandable that by the end you will end up with, with 40 or, or, or 30. So yeah, anyway, in this process, you have a lot of this personal communication and, and, and this is also, I think, one learning lesson for, for municipalities. They were in the beginning, I mean, the administration or high, high level politicians, they were so much afraid of, you know, exactly that being, or, being citizens disappointed said, well, maybe, but but I was always telling, and I think that now they see that if you do this communication smartly and exactly, if you explain that, look, you understand our uh, our situation that we have, that we have the same budget, but for that money, we, we do not have, we, we do not get any more. Then citizens understand, well, this is, a, this is, I think, goes for, generally for communication or, or poly, any political communication that, that we should 
understands that citizens are much more tolerant when they explain the reasons and 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 say are not so critical dots dots is say are not so disappointed but if they are not explained and this is just decided then they are angry or disappointed so i think this is this process has always very important element this is very much personal communication that's why one of the critical issues is always to have I would suggest always if there is a communication manager in municipality or in dark two cases is uh, the, the municipality uh, this communication team is uh, is involved because by the end engagement is just you know a lot of two-sided communication so this is important that was one of my uh, questions in the next section is there a specific person which is in charge of PD? It should be, I think that there yeah, in 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 in, in Dartu cases was in early years we had small mini contract also to be always there to support and monitor. Now uh, we are we are not involved in uh, I mean in any I'm I'm just yeah I'm just as expert I'm interested and I I I, I try to be involved as much as I <laughs> I can. But but now it is handed over. Yes, in in case of Tartu cities, this is a communication manager who is also in charge of this. So and also helps a lot to uh, to make this um, generic campaign. I I, I mean that uh, when citizens submit uh, their ideas, some of them have very nice photos to 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 complement their ideas. And but in order. To give again to equalize the chances to, to kind of support those who are probably are not so skilled to make their filters. The communication department, communication manager, him herself, I I have seen her taking photos of those uh, those areas to to really to, to also to add to those ideas who, who are without this illustrated material. So this is again a lot of a lot of communication work and early years. Uh, when we started pilot project, it was there were many critics uh, arguing that oh there is so much money goes for you know marketing or promote and then communicate this process. But I think that at least in the beginning it is it is needed also because when we started in Dartu it was completely new. It was new in the region, not just only in Estonia. So it needed because yeah, I mean the, as I said, people. Municipality thinks that everybody already knows because I don't know. Information is on website now. It doesn't help. You, you, you need to be very, very, very proactive. Yes, this is something that also was outlined by Riga Municipality and of course others very much that uh, with the years and then a lot, lot more campaign, it gave yields both yeah. in terms of projects submitted, but also in terms of people who voted. Of so course, now, uh, now the, the and in the beginning, really, city city needed to do more. Of course, now it's it's less and less city needs to do because now, I mean, citizens have understood that actually nobody else can fight for their idea or better than they themselves. So citizens, are, in this way, citizens are more active and skilled also. They have learned that that even if it's good idea, you have to say, you have to convince everybody that it's good idea. Wonderful, thank you. Also wanted to remind people uh, listening here that you are, uh, the floor is yours to ask questions. Uh, feel free to raise your hand or ask them in a chat. But whilst we wait for those, of course, I have my list from the regional seminar still, and we are just in half. And one thing that's very important that uh, do people who are, and you kind of covered it, but do people who are registered in the area can only submit and vote, or is it anyone? For example, I'm from another municipality, can I vote in another municipality's participatory budgeting process? No, you can sub submit uh, your idea, but you cannot vote. Because uh, this is, yeah, this is, I have had, as I mentioned, I have had several uh, uh, discussions uh, with municipalities because, I mean, when we started in Tartu, I, I argued 
I try to convince them that when, especially when we want to, uh, to uh, mobilize or activate young people, then we, we should do everything possible. And probably when we talk about young people, this registration is not so important because they are moving more. And so in the beginning, municipalities were really strict that they enabled only registered, well, the, to boot uh, only registered citizens because, of course, the main argument was that this is taxpayers' money and then the only those who have concretely contributed to this should have right. Now they are a bit, at least here, more flexible. So as I said, that the city, which is student city, basically leaving out one third or more of, of uh, basically people who still live for a long period here. So I finally, finally will say we're ready to, 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 to also to let also full-time students to, to vote. Because technically, at least in Estonia, considering our X road and how the data is moving and can be changed, it's not 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 very complicated. So they say now, I think whenever uh, somebody uh, logs in into the system uh, with Estonian ID card, then say uh, uh, the system automatically anyway recognizes if, if you are a registered citizen or not. But now they just, you know, added this extra functionality that the system asks uh, from, from education registry also data, data and gets data who is full-time student. So, I mean, at least in Estonian technically, this is not complex, complex at all for municipalities also if they want, for instance, to include students who are usually not registered in because otherwise they are not getting any student benefits. So to also to leave them, because I think it is very important, really, if we want them to show their future in our cities and to engage them. But general rule is, yes, only registered citizens. Yes, I agree with you that uh, this is one barrier that could not be there. Uh, and there are some municipalities who haven't, uh, because the whole verification process is difficult. Uh, they haven't put on this rule, but it really depends. And uh, the new law requires that they, these are the registered people in the area, but we'll see how the future develops. And I agree with your approach. Maybe we will manage to get it in somehow. Mm -hmm. And then I have a, a few practical, less uh, organized questions. So one is, how is in-person voting organized? Can you just briefly outline it, how it looks in Estonia? Ah, you mean uh, you mean not 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 online? Yeah. Well, uh, it's uh, uh, in Tartu city when we started. It's uh, it's actually well in in rural municipalities. It's like just for the the period which is uh, usually this voting period is one week. In Tartu city, it is now I think two two weeks, but but mostly it is one week. And for this period, municipalities still organize uh, something what say it's like it's like voting poll but of course mini 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 poll there in the municipality building this is just one person usually my i don't know municipality secretary or something who is for this period in charge uh, and who collects uh, who collects his these votes uh, i mean it is important that citizen comes uh, with identification card it, it, i mean he or she doesn't need to know those bingos or anything what is needed for 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 online uh, procedure but but just to ident be identified and 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 there is a list of ideas and 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 he, he or she just you know uh, notes down but in Tartu city which is a big city as i said in estonian context and we say wanted that all boots will be still immediately going to the same system in an electronic vote. The on-site voting uh, is, is, is organized this way that for this period of time, uh, during this period of time in Dorn Hall, there is an extra, extra persons recruited and there are touch screens. So everybody comes, we still with your ID card or passport, you are identified by, by those uh, official uh, official uh, civil servants 
but then you are doing your your choice anyway. I mean, in a, in a way, electronically, because touching the, the same system is, is there is already open. You just you know choose your uh, choose a choice because you are identified there electronically by the civil servant, and your 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 boot is going immediately to the same same system. You did it basically like quasi electronically. You did not need to, to use your pins or anything, but still you, that your vote is calculated electronically. So this is this way. But I guess the main idea is to make it more accessible for people who are not so comfortable. Yeah, I think that, uh, that yeah, it now gives for all digital engagements that, I mean, even if we talk about digital engagement, we should, I think it is wise always to keep just the uh, alternatives also uh, possible because there are always people who, who just prefer to do things in an old traditional, old fashioned way. And I think we should respect it, but uh, because yeah, why, why to create new barriers? Yeah, yeah, I agree. So some municipalities organize it like local libraries or uh, municipal yeah. properties. So that's also similar to this. Um, and next, next question from the list is who can submit projects? Is it one individual, a group of individuals or an NGO? Any, any, it's it, yeah, but because uh, by the end, yeah, we, we are not called some projects because they are not projects. They are just, you know, ideas or proposals, as I said, just short description. And it's it's not like a, uh, like project proposal, which really probably needs to be uh, be done with by by group of people or by civil society organizations. By any, we have also we have still some ideas coming from group of people or some I don't know neighborhood associations. But but most or biggest number of ideas uh, are is always coming from from individual citizens. But what is good, I think, good good trend in terms of as as we aim to have this bigger community activism is that really first years when we started there were coming similar very similar ideas coming from different individual citizens sometimes one idea was coming from this uh, similar ideas were coming from the same house but people were not communicating to each other now this is almost never the case because you see that people have understood that actually I alone with my idea, I can probably never win. So they start already discussing the idea in the beginning before submitting it with neighbors and you know with neighborhood. So there are less ideas, but these ideas which are finally submitted are of, of much higher quality, have already sort of community support. So this is an interesting trend that I think this is also one of the things we wanted to achieve. So. Great, yeah. I remember you also telling this is one of, in one of the first meetings that for history budgeting was a way to make people communicate. It yeah, means. yeah, Estonians are bad at communicating and, and, and talking to, to your neighbors. So if we find if we find identify any any ways to to to, to push this, it's good. Wonderful. Uh, I have uh, last two questions, I would say, and uh, then we will see if we have some from the audience. So one is: Is there a kind of spillover effect where the projects that didn't win are still incorporated in, munis in municipalities planning. Do you see that? Yeah, yes. Yeah. This is one of the things I think also what is what is really good. We we even couldn't expect this happening to that extent as it has been happening because now uh, in Tartu City, every every year we still do some small small kind of wrap up and and, and review uh, what we learned and uh, and and how to be better prepared for next year, and uh, and this is uh, last year we did kind of statistics and we realized that actually more than twenty years because I mean each year there are there are two winning ideas and we have done this. Uh, for 20 for 10 years so it's around like 20 winning ideas but we discovered that actually almost 20 ideas have already implemented by city which were never winning ideas 
but they were just considered so important, so interesting, or already resonating so resonating so well with, with, with city plans that they are implemented also. There are always possibility to find extra resources. Of course, it was outside of this participatory budgeting process. But this is also one of my key messages uh, to municipalities uh, and, and to citizens also. This is not to winners and losers game, really. I mean, citizens should also understand that if my idea was not winning, I mean, if it's a good idea, it either keeps hanging around and coming back, or anyway, it stays and smart city and smart uh, civil servants, smart politicians will implement it anyway, one day. So it is really to give signals. So it should not, never be seen so black and white that there are winning ideas and losing ideas because this is our, our experience tells us that so many ideas have. I mean, one, one good example is with, with, you know, this talk, talk playgrounds. This was quite a new thing in, in, in Estonia, you know, extra playgrounds for dogs in city uh, city public space which is now we we do have many of them in city i don't know seven years ago when we, we uh, there were there were none in estonia i think but citizens started to submit ideas that we we need our we need extra separated space to leave our dogs to run and and, and so and this was new idea. This was never winning because there are probably never so many dog keepers in, in Estonia. But but it remains and cities, uh, city understood that it solves so many problems actually because other people are complaining that there are running dogs. And so, so they invested in it. They did, I don't know, in pilot projects, few of them. Now we have basically in every neighborhood extra like talk space and this come this came out of this process but was never a winning idea so and this is now like necessity these playgrounds are getting more uh, getting getting cooler and cooler sometimes i i'm mixing them up thinking that this is for kids but no actually this is for dogs so. yeah i think that's a, that's an amazing way how to look at it that it has uh, way more added value besides just the projects yeah. that we execute and i think this is something that at least we should communicate even more with municipalities but i think municipalities understand that but it's great to hear that it's also like that there and my last question is uh, how quickly winning projects go from winning to being implemented on average uh, well this is actually the the rule and i I still think that in Tartu city and in smaller municipalities, they try to stick the rule also that this should be executed uh, during the next uh, next uh, next uh, year already. So this is cannot be taking taking more than one year to basically to to also implement. Of course, now with all those, this is this was a rule made and adopted before COVID and all this. Now, I mean, COVID changed many things. Now, of course, uh, the world changed many things. You just cannot, maybe you can have a, have a bit, but but there are no, there is, there are no materials just available to, to do it. So it might be postponed, but still I think the aim is, and I think it is also partly connected to the, you know, managing expectations of citizens that, that this process still needs that, that things should be done done quickly because really it, this process is so so well and clearly defined and it should be so it, it should give quick tangible uh, results in order to really motivate citizens also to, to come next year and, and so so it is important for municipality also that it is not like um, average, let's say, investment object, because usually, I mean, they are small scale objects as well, because we are still talking about small money when in, in investment context, so should be doable. Great, I think, uh, I think we have covered so many questions uh, that especially for municipalities without any background in participatory budgeting is going to feel a bit safer because first years usually feel very scary because there are many municipalities who have said that like it's a bit scary to take that extra step yeah. it's pretty unknown and of course as we usually say the first years are going to be the toughest 
with the biggest involvement and biggest investment. But as you said, with the upcoming years, the project project lives on its own in a way. Yeah, yeah. So that's fantastic. If we have any questions from the audience, we could take them. Uh, but I really feel that we have covered a lot. So if there are no hands raised and no questions, I think on this note, I could say a huge thank you for being here and giving us a more in-depth idea of how uh, participatory budgeting works in uh, Estonia. And we hope that with the upcoming years, we will also we'll have many lessons learned to share with uh, you and others as well. So thank you very much. And I wish you a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, keep me please updated with all your developments uh, there because I'm really interested. <laughs> thank you. Bye.